Hello again everybody, um, this is Joseph and this is a tutorial how to read automotive schematics and from the basics of Ohm's law or how, how understanding parallel circuits you can apply that theory to almost anything especially automotive how to read the symbols first let's go over the symbols now in order for the lights to go on say the, the fog lights to go on you always need something a switch involved could be one switch could be two switches you also need something called a relay then in almost every part of automotive you'll find a fuse and then you'll find the loads themselves the bulbs that have to be lit starting from the top and you're not always going to see a battery symbol so you have to understand or it's understood that the battery is connected over here now when you have a, th a switch a switch means you activate it by obviously operating the switch that's physically but electrically let's see what happens when you activate the switch in different positions we know that current can only flow when the circuit is complete from B plus to ground now if you look at this, you see three positions available for the switch. <clears throat> Off position, park position, and on. Off is not connected. Off means obviously nothing will be activated. Park means, if you look at it, you see a connection. If you put it on on, nothing is connected. So how can something be on and it has no connection well for our purposes we just want to turn on the parking lights or the fog lamps in this case so the switch is connected for us to activate the fog lights when does that happen when we put it in this position as you see when i drew the orange line to make continuity so from here from b plus which is not drawn from here current flows through this wire a yellow violet uh, striped wire now we said when you have another switch that we activate this switch you always look when you have switches you always look where there is a complete connection if the switch is in this position that's in a normal resting position when I activate it I'm flipping it over to the other side that means when I'm activating the switch, current will flow over here where I put the orange. Again, we said we need a relay. When current flows through a relay, through a coil, it gets magnetized and it pulls in the armature and the, sw and, 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 and the contact. So when the contact is moved from one position to another position, we activate another circuit so therefore current comes here we get a magnetic field as you see this dotted line that means these are one ha one is related to the other and one is connected to the other and one is control of the other this circuit controls this circuit so when current flows here then current can flow through here and this this will be activated this switch will be going from this contact position to this contact position so therefore, current goes through here, starts to magnetize the coil, and there's a resistor across it. What's missing over here is actually probably a ground, because current has to go somewhere. Now, from this, current flows here, in this position with the orange, through the switch. Now, where is the current going to go now? Remember, if you remember, we went... We went over parallel circuits, series circuits, and if you see my video about transistor amplifiers and my other channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph, a parallel circuit does not change if there's bulbs or there's resistors, and these are in parallel. How do I know? Because this is across this, this is across this. That gives us the rule, all voltages are the same in a parallel circuit. Therefore, across this bulb of the instrument cluster in the dashboard, there's 12 volts. Across this, on the, uh, on the right, 
left is 12 volts. How do I know that? Well, I didn't lose any voltage drop. From the battery going through here, there's no voltage drop. There's minimal in, in, in the wires. So, therefore, the rule applies 12 volts across all of these. Now, for the sake of troubleshooting, I go to, or I look at my fog lights. Both are out. Right, left. And the instrument cluster is out. All three are out. Do I have to go and measure 12 volts over here? No, no purpose. Why? Because I know there's nothing here. If there will be 12 volts, these, these will be lit, or one of them can be lit. So therefore, now I have to back probe or say, what will cause that? Well, besides the, the obvious the fuse, what about this circuit over here? Let's go relay. If this is not activated, guess what? No current flows here. I don't have 12 volts. Because this will be in the, in the resting position. There is no contact from this part of the circuit to that part of the circuit. Of course, if this switch also is not activated, you don't get the 12 volts over here. If this switch is not activated, or this is in the on position, guess what? No current flows through this to magnetize this, to activate this, to give you 12 volts. So the fact that I look at, see what's lit, right away tells me it's not these. Could be a wire from here to here, from one side of the fuse to this side, to the common, could be. Could be from here to here, this wire, you never know. But it could be up the line over here also. Let's take the most simplest one again. Again, over here first we put the fuse. Here we had the fuse last. Does it make a difference? No, it'll still protect us. So therefore, the fusing over here is, fuse rating is 10 amps. So this is for the reverse light. Again, when you put the car in reverse, what happens? Current flows, but it has to flow to a, comp uh, a complete path. That means this switch has to be activated, thrown over or flipped, right? In order to complete the circuit electronically, electrically. So therefore, this over here, this one over here, when this is closed, this is lit, the reverse lights are lit, and this is lit. By changing your gear shift into reverse, you're putting on the lights in the back. So therefore, this will have 12 volts. This is still a parallel circuit. Same rule applies. 12 volts across this, 12 volts across this. Now, when you go in reverse, you doesn't mean that the lights are illuminated. Sometimes you put the switch and you think, okay, it's in reverse. But if there's a vehicle behind you and the, and the lights are not lit in reverse, guess what? It doesn't know you're going in reverse. So the best thing is to go, when you put the gear shift in reverse, to go behind another car and see the reflection of the lights. Just like the brake lights, you see the reflection on the car behind you. Or, of course, you could put something on the, on, on the brake or step on it, put something on it, then it goes to check the lights. But reverse, how can you do that? Well, you can see the reflection or someone else can see for you. So another circuit over here, a little more complex. A little more complex. A dotted line over here means, and I call these Siamese twins, when this is activated this switch in the position this is also activated so therefore and when this is in the off position this is in the off position when this is in a park position this is in a park position when this is in the on position this is in the on position whatever this does this does whatever this does this does they are ganged together they call it so now we have something over here called a check control module. Now, we always said, usually you see the fuse first. So in order to activate this, which position does the switch have to be in? Again, 
If it's an on, there's no connection. It will not work. The only one that will give us a connection is park. So therefore, when I put it in park, remember what we just said? This is also in park. Current flows here from the B plus, from the battery, through the fuse, through the switch, through the connections, through the wires. Now, there's something more, a little complicated to follow schematics. You have a choice. First of all, current flows here. Left park light. Automatic, it goes in here. But this node or this connection tells us that the current will split. Anytime you see this, this dotted, black dotted dot, a node they call it, with branches, that means there's a connection. Now, where does the current flow and where do we follow the wiring diagram? This is the tricky part. Whenever you see, it says with, and this is without. Now, let's say I'm looking at the schematic. I'm trying to figure out what does CCM mean? Well, you know what? I, I look at this and I say, okay, check control module. That's probably what CCM means. Does it make sense? Let's see. We just said W and a, and a slash O means without CCM. That means I don't expect to see, if I follow this path, I don't expect to see any module. I follow this path, guess what? Just two lights are lit. That makes sense. So without the mod, module and I don't have it. And this tells me with. So let's see. Let's follow this line. With check control module. I follow this line, right? Not this line, this line. This tells me there is a, a check control module. So let's follow it. And it, sure enough, here it is. Check control module. So therefore, if I'm not familiar with schematics or the motor schematics, and you see this a lot, sometimes it says automatic transmission, sometimes it says manual transmission, it splits it up and you have to figure out which path should I take. So the fact that it says with and without tells me when, when I come to with, that means I should have something included in that path. In this case, CCM. If, if it says with a PCM, that means I should, uh, I should see a PCM, the computer module, which I spoke about in automotive channel. Or automatic transmission, I should see. And therefore, from this control module, same thing applies. These lights, these bulbs are lit. So in other words, these bulbs depend on not just a switch, but also a module to make a light. I hope that's understood. Same thing over here. Now, the same thing over here, as you, as, as you can see. Now, this was for the left. So if you have a left in a schematic automotive, you expect to see some another part of a schematic for the right. Or if you're following the right, I expect to see something for the, for the left. Let's see if that makes sense. We said that we, we need both to be lit, left and right bulbs. In order for that to happen, we need this switch to close this circuit simultaneously as this. And therefore we do have that because this is ganged together. So if I close this part of the switch, lighting this, I'm closing this part of this switch, lighting the right. That makes sense. Again, what do we come to? With or without. If I go without this module, I should not see a module in this part of the diagram. Let's follow it. I go over here. Come over here. Right? To the gray, yellow. Gray, yellow. And I don't see a module. That makes sense because it says without. How about if I follow this? With check control module. So if I follow this path, I should see it. Sure enough, here it is. I see it. And this is for the right. So this part, through this module, controls the right tail light lights. And it controls the right tail lights over here. And it controls the right park light over here. And this controls the left tail lights, tail lights, 
and left taillights over here. So therefore, 12 volts across here, these are in parallel. 12 volts here, 12 volts here, 12 volts here. These must be probably connections or switches in there, so I expect to see around 12 volts here also. Same rules apply of parallel circuit. Does not matter if it's resistors, doesn't matter. Ductors, if it's if it's in parallel, you expect to see the same voltage across each one. So remember that. To follow a schematic, start from the top, work your way down. But when you see bolt, whenever you see right and left, expect them to be lit simultaneously. And expect to be and expect to see a switch that will switch two parts together. In this case, these are ganged together. Again, if I put this in park, this will go in park. If I put this in on, I put this in on, this will not light. No connection, and this will not light. Therefore, thank you, and I hope you find this very informative, and please subscribe to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics, where hopefully you'll see transistor amplifier circuits, uh, voltage Dividers and Ohm's Law and my other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Um, please subscribe and please uh, see a video that's of your interest. Thanks for watching.